In this video, I'm going to be talking about the software engineering side projects that I made during college that helped me land a job at Google and Microsoft. So recently, I just posted a video about how I got a job at Google and Microsoft with a really bad GPA. It was a 2.8. I got a D in a class and I almost failed. Yikes. And in that video, I talked about how I knew that I couldn't rely on my GPA to get interviews at these big tech companies. So I went extra hard in the paint on my side projects to let those carry my resume through the recruiting process. The reason why I'm making this video today is to give you, the viewer, the future big tech software engineer, some inspiration on some potential side projects that you can work on to make sure that you land your dream job in big tech. Also, if you're new to the channel, my name is Toyan Kim and I post weekly content about working in tech, tech news, tech everything, tech lifestyle. So if you're interested in this type of topic and you want to see more of it, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. I post weekly. Anyways, enough of a plug. Let's get into it. So just to give you a brief overview of my job history, I first landed an internship at Microsoft during my third year of college. And then afterwards, during my fourth year of college is when I got the full-time job offer at Google. So I'm going to be separating the side projects that I had for the Microsoft internship and then for the Google full-time offer. The very first side project that I had under my belt going into my internship at Microsoft was actually a landing page that I did a complete redesign for for a startup in my hometown. The way that I found this opportunity was that I found this giant list of startups and I just emailed every single one of them asking if I can do a little internship for like four to five weeks with them or if I can do some type of freelancing contract work for them. And keep in mind this was after my very first quarter of college where I took my very first computer science course so I really did not know that much and I actually had to self-teach myself HTML, CSS, and JavaScript so I can do some more like full stack web development. Although I wouldn't really call it full stack web development because I really did not know anything. I didn't know React. I didn't know any cool technologies. I was just doing bare bones HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And after emailing and applying to roughly 40 companies, one of them reached out to me and said, hey, we need a landing page redesign. Would you be able to take that under your belt? And I was like, honestly, I'm pretty underqualified to do so, but sure, why not? And luckily with this opportunity, I was able to get that first side project under my belt to be able to put a company name on my resume and use this for future applications for future internships and full-time offers in the future. The second software engineering project that I had was a little thing called AutoCal. It was a little project that a group of friends and I worked during a hackathon and basically what it was was a smart calendar app that parsed through all of your emails and provided these calendars to let you know what's going on all around your campus at any day and any time. And yes, is this something that Google Calendar does automatically? Yes. But I was on Microsoft Outlook and at least back in my day, that definitely was not a thing that Outlook Calendar or Microsoft Calendar did. So my friends and I thought that this would be a good hackathon project because we were just getting absolutely inundated with so many emails about all the newest events going on campus, join this club, join this acapella group. I can't sing, why are you asking me that? This is my very first hackathon that I ever participated in and this is also the very first time that I ever did React. I never heard about it before, I've never used it before and I learned everything that I did at the workshops offered at this hackathon. So obviously with my lack of experience, you can pretty much tell that this project was not the best. It barely worked. It was very, very, very barely ever so functional, but that honestly doesn't matter. The whole point of a hackathon is not to go out and build a multi-billion dollar corporation or some production grade code, but quite rather just to prove that you can take some initiative to go out there and learn and build something on your own. And obviously it has to work to some degree, which my project did, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And this project certainly was not perfect at all. The third side project that I had under my belt was something called Scheduler. And obviously in true startup fashion, I left out all of the vowels and it was spelled like like S-C-H-L-D-R. And this is basically a full stack web application that allowed students at my school filter the classes that they want to schedule in a more granular way to get more information out of it. And the reason why I built this application was because the class picker at my school looked like it was built out of the 90s and it hasn't been redesigned since then. So it was really horrible, really ugly, and it was just an absolute horrible user interface. So for that reason, I decided, you know, why not make this a little bit prettier and a little bit easier on the eyes? I definitely did not release this to many people out there and I'm pretty sure I was the only one that used it. But once again, that's the whole point of a side project. It doesn't have to be a project that's used by millions of people or even thousands of people on your school campus. It just has to be something that you actually built from beginning to end to showcase your technical skills. And this full stack web application did in my case, it served that purpose well. And the way that I found time to build this was by instituting like a self-imposed hackathon during my spring break. Yeah, you can say that things got kind of crazy and I was like getting kind of lit and partying pretty hard. And what the self-imposed hackathon was, was basically just a weekend where Saturday and Sunday, I dedicated those two days purely to building out some type of project that I had in mind. You can either do this solo or gather a group of friends to do this with you because honestly, it's a great way for you to get a substantial side project on your resume to make it much beefier and to show your technical expertise in a certain tech stack. And also, you know, sometimes hazing yourself by staying up for like 24 hours straight with your friends is kind of fun too. So, you know, definitely try it out. Quick pause in this video, but if you've been enjoying the content and finding it useful, please do me a favor and hit that like button and help support a small channel like me grow into a bigger one. And also because I know how crazy difficult and stressful the job recruiting process can be, if you are interested 
interested in any type of career consulting, I do offer some at Buy Me A Coffee slash Toyen Kim. You can book some one-on-one -on -one time on my calendar and we can talk about career consulting and career paths forward, and as well as providing resume feedback and resume critiques as well. So once again, if you're interested in some type of career consulting, please check it out at Buy Me A Coffee slash Toyen Kim. So those are all of the side projects that I had on my resume leading up to my internship at Microsoft, but I knew that I had to get a few more side projects under my belt to make sure that the following year, my senior year, that I would be able to be more attractive to more companies. So I decided to have one more side project under my belt and this was something called Left on Red. Left on Red was initially a full stack web application that basically analyzed your iMessages. The user would visit the website and they would upload their chat DB file, which is where all of your iMessages are stored on your Mac. And then we would go and parse through all of the text and return a bunch of fun metrics, such as what are your favorite emojis? What are your favorite words? What are the times of the days that you text most frequently, the least frequently? How many texts have you sent and received with a particular person and who you have left on red. So there were just a bunch of these kind of useless but kind of fun metrics that you can pull up and we decided to visualize this in a full stack web application. You can actually find the website at this URL right here but the actual data processing no longer happens on the web application due to privacy concerns. So the rest of my friends that I worked on this project with actually are open sourcing it on GitHub and it's actually an app that you can download and work on yourself and you can test it out with your very own messages and you can find it at this GitHub link right here. It's definitely way, way more polished than it used to be back when I first built it with my friend and they've taken on to leaps and bounds to something much more refined. So if you're interested in checking it out and also checking out the source code, please feel free to take a look there. All right, well, that is it for today's video. And hopefully after watching this, you have some inspiration for some potential hackathon or potential side project idea that you can build on your side so you can beef up your resume to make sure that you are as, as attractive as possible to the big tech recruiters that are out there. I know how crazy stressful the job recruiting process can be since I've been through the process many, many times. And for that reason, I am cheering you on from the sidelines and if you have any questions related to job recruiting and how to navigate the whole process or just tech lifestyle in general, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll either answer your question in your comment or I'll make a full blown video answering it. Thanks once again for watching today's video and if you enjoyed the content, please feel free to hit that like button and if you wanna see more of my content, please feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.